Ah, oh, there's Ernie. There's Dick right there. There's Dick right there, guys. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. It is actually 5.30 in the morning here in Bali, Indonesia. I am heading to the airport for my last big adventure. We're gonna jump on a plane and head to a place called Libyan Baju. And then we're gonna have about a 70 kilometer drive up into the wilderness, probably in the middle of nowhere, to a place called Astana Ular. Now that happens to be what they call the retic cave. Now apparently there's a bunch of wild reticulated pythons that live in this cave and they feed on the bats. So we're gonna go take some exploring in the cave and then we're gonna wait at dusk because they say that as the bats are flying out at dusk, the retics come out to try to snatch them up and we're gonna see if we can catch some of it. Now it's gonna be quite an adventure, but well worth it. I hope you guys have an amazing day. I mean, this sounds like a pretty amazing one to me. What do you say, me and you? Hit the airport and get this adventure started. There's always that nervous anticipation when you're heading to a new destination. And in particular, when you're trying to find a reticulated python in the wild, you never know what you're gonna find. And then the fact that we don't have a guide to find this cave, we just have directions, so we wish us luck. Hey, okay, so we are back at the airport. Again, this is a pretty short flight. I think it's maybe about 35 or 45 minutes, so it's literally like up and down to this island, but uh, I still hate planes, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. So we are uh, checking in and... Uh, Hi, good morning. Get number two. Seven ten boarding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, I literally have no idea how this day is gonna shake out. You know, you figure we're jumping on a plane, we're heading to a small island. We have no guide. We've never been to this place. We're hoping that we can just find this cave. We're gonna be there at night, so we have to hike back in the dark on a path that we've never been on. And hopefully we're gonna find reticulated pythons and other things. It sounds awesome. I mean, it really does. It's gonna be an adventure, but I don't know how this day is gonna turn out. But hey, let's get on a plane and We'll take it one step at a time. You know, in the end, what it is is I hope that I can inspire you guys to step out, to do things that are outside your comfort zone. Trust me, as much as I love adventure and travel and experiencing things, this is so far outside my comfort zone. You know, I don't like to fly. I don't like to, to go to places where I could get lost because my sense of direction isn't that good. But I just think, you know, you have to push yourself. So I'm not saying you have to jump on a plane and go to some, you know, Pacific island and maybe get lost in the middle of nowhere. What I'm saying is just step out of your comfort zone because sometimes your best adventures actually come from when you're kind of uncomfortable. So I hope that this will inspire you to do it and uh, I hope that we make it back. <laughs> Regardless of what happens, we're gonna have an awesome time. Hi. Hi, good morning. Mr. Brian, thank, thank you. Enjoy your flight. Thank you. of small planes and so the fact that I'm getting on a propeller plane to uh, this is, is absolutely crazy. I mean I tell you I am I'm really stressed out right now but uh, I'm gonna do my best to get on. Brian literally I literally don't know man I'm serious I don't know if I can do this man. <laughs> All right, guys, so um, I'm on the plane. I'm working on it. I'm very stressed out. <sighs> Push your limits, right? Push your limits. I told you guys I would take you on the emotional journey, and quite frankly, uh, when we booked the flight over, I 
thought that maybe it was going to be a normal jet because it said it was going to be a jet. So I don't even know if I would have just stepped on the plane if I knew it was a prop plane. But it's a relatively decent sized one. Uh, the weather looks okay. Uh, the flight looks like it's actually about an hour and a half. I thought it was only about an hour. Definitely uh, up and down with my anxiety. But, but, uh, uh, but we're on now. There's no Laban Baju. What an absolutely gorgeous island. I mean, my gosh. This is much more remote. I am absolutely loving this feel. And take a look at the Komodo dragon in the distance. Yeah, this is a place that was well worth that flight. And again, it kind of just continued to tell you guys that you have to step out of your comfort zone. I did not want to get on that plane. I almost walked off that plane. But if I did, I would have missed this opportunity to see this amazing island and to see what adventures are lying ahead. Oh, I'll tell you what, guys, my heart rate was definitely up. It was a little bit rough to get on that plane. Here we are in the land of Komodo. We're gonna head to the hotel and do a little bit of work before we take that 67 mile drive to Asana Ular and then the 40 minute hike to the cave. So uh, this island is absolutely gorgeous, man. <sighs> this is when you say it's good to be Okay guys, so here is our accommodations. Certainly this island is extremely different than the other islands that we've been on. It is definitely pretty rural, but this hotel is awesome. I mean, it's nothing too fancy in the rooms, but take a look at this view. Oh my gosh, holy moly. I think I know where someone, this guy is spending his night tonight when we get back from this adventure sitting out looking at the ocean. I mean, my gosh, that is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> this is truly paradise right here. I mean, whoa! Now that's freaking awesome. But hey, we've got a big adventure ahead of us, and uh, we just found out that that 67 kilometers is probably gonna take us over three hours because it's a dirt road, it's very hard terrain. But hey, it's all worth it, man. Let's hope we find some retics, and who knows what else we're gonna have. This is, uh, this is definitely, this is the true Indonesia, what I envisioned Indonesia to be like, so I'm so glad I came. All right, guys, I've done a lot of crazy things in my life, but uh, this one is right up there. We are heading into no man's land with very little idea of what's gonna happen. What do you think, Brian, you ready for this? I've been ready for this my entire life. Okay, man, let's get out of here. I hope, I, I hope you guys are watching this vlog, that means I survived. Like with most of my experiences when I'm traveling to uh, different countries, especially third world countries, there's always a lot of negotiation that goes on. So we had a driver arrange for 24 hours to take us, but they don't want to take us there unless we give them extra money. So we're trying to make sure that we're not going to get double charged. I don't have a problem with paying extra money if we didn't already pay for it. So we're trying to negotiate what the best way to go is. And uh, they don't want to go to the cave themselves, so they're just going to drop us. But it does sound like we have to get clearance from the locals because you're not allowed to go unless the locals tell you. So they're, you know, the experience for me tells me that we're going to have to bribe some locals to let us on their property. So uh, this is all part of the travel when you're doing this type of thing. It'll, it'll all work out.
deeper we get, the worse the road is. The more narrow, the more tore up. Just, uh, it's just getting more difficult, but they assure us that we will be able to get there. Exactly when, I'm not sure, because it looks like these roads were uh, paved maybe 25 years ago. No one's done any maintenance on them ever since. <laughs> we're literally crawling. I have no idea how long this is gonna go on, but it'll all be worth it. We better catch some retakes. Set of villages. Okay, so after a very long, bumpy, somewhat treacherous road, we are at uh, the village and we need to go to the head of the village to ask for permission to go to uh, the Rita cave. So let's hope that this goes well. So we've, re we've created quite the buzz and the whole village has come out to see us. Okay, so we are wandering to try to meet the uh, the elders. Uh, we have a lot of people following us. It's uh, been quite an interesting experience. They, I, I take it they don't get a lot of visitors in this village. So it's been, uh, this is all the interesting rage for today so but let's hope the elders like us and we get along well with them and they give us the go ahead because it's been a long journey to get here it'd be a disappointment if we weren't able to do it i think we'll be okay Hi. Hi, Brian. Harus kenal nama Brian. Largos. 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 Blasius. 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 Oh, selamat. Simon. Atau lihat yang penting nggak foto anak kue itu sebenarnya. Aku tengah cek karena rantang ular ku. Biasa sendiri. Kalau aku tahu saya gak tidak perlu tidak perlu bahasa Inggris yang penting kasih tahu jalan cek kami bisa lihat ular di dalam. Bukan tahu kita. Asima asima. Kita ada teman. 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 This is uh, they they want to make a ritual according their uh, 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 tradition to open the way. We've stopped off here and we're going to do a ritual to give a safe passage into the cave. Um, the elder did strap on a big knife, but I, <laughs> it leads you for a little bit of concern, but uh, I think everyone is seems to be excited about this. It's definitely a first for me. I've never been through this, and uh, but uh, I, I'll be happy to get past this and get hiking to the cave. I'd rather deal with uh, reticulated pythons and bat guana than a tribe that I don't know what their intentions are. So we have come as far as we can in a car, and we are now on foot. Uh, we have the elders in front of us leading our way, uh, as well as one other guide. And uh, sounds like it's about an hour hike to the cave now. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but uh, so far so good. At least we're alive and seems like everyone's friendly. We've been walking for about a half an hour now. We are definitely really deep in the bush. Uh, I'll be honest with you, if these guys weren't with us, I don't know how we would get out of here. So this worked out really well. Uh, this is a crazy, I wonder who found this. I mean, this is way deep in the bush. I mean, we're talking, we're half an hour in and we're still only halfway there. Oh my gosh, take a look at this.
This is great. Ah, oh, there's everything right there. Right there, right there, guys. Did I get it? We had only probably 10 feet in the cage when we came across our first reticulated python. You know, so oftentimes I go to places where the lure is much bigger than the actual event. The fact that you think, oh, there are just loads of reticulated pythons, and then you get there and you don't see anything whatsoever. But in this case, we were literally 10 feet into the cave. We came across this little bugger here. And he was a little feisty at first, but you can see he's totally calmed down now. I can't imagine what else is in this cave at 10 foot in we come across our first reticulated python. Oh my gosh. This was definitely worth the trip. The first ever reticulated python I've ever seen in a while. Whew, that's awesome. You guys know that I love catching snakes, but I love releasing them even more. Let this little bugger go and see what he does. There you go, little guy. There you go. Wow. That? that was awesome, man. Anyway, walking in. Two feet of bad guano. Not sure where you're stepping. Could be a re kick in here. It's definitely crazy. just out of the famous retic cave. We only came across one retic, and we went kind of far back, but to be honest with you, I just couldn't breathe. That back guano, the confined feeling, the muggy air, it was really difficult. Once we were a couple of turns past the opening where it was complete pitch darkness, it was one of the harder things that I've done. I mean, just I didn't realize how claustrophobic I was gonna feel, and, and the fact that I couldn't breathe, uh, I think was the biggest problem. So. We turned back, but I got to see a lot of bats, and we got to see the one retic. <sighs> yeah, sure, I'd love to say that <sighs> we found 20 retics. The fact is we found one wild reticulated python, and that's really all I cared about. This whole journey from Bali to here, the long drive, the, the bizarre rituals with you know the, the villages, it was all worth it. <sighs> this was an absolute success. I think we're just gonna hang out here Maybe wait till it gets a little darker and see if something shows up. I've never been so happy to sit in a car, even if it's gonna be a three hour windy, crazy, road sick road trip. I think we're gonna stop off for some dinner in a little town. Who knows what the heck we're gonna be eating, but can stop off there and then take that windy road. It'll probably be a beautiful drive though. Back to the hotel. I have some work to do tonight. I still have to edit an entire vlog in the next like eight hours, edit and upload it with this internet speed. That ought to be the biggest adventure of the day. Oh, it's so good to be done with that hike. It was so hard. Okay guys, I am back in the room and I am definitely going to be shutting it down. This was an insane day. We not only flew all the way to this island, but then we drove three and a half hours, hiked an hour, spent time in a bat cave, then hiked an hour back, which was harder because it was uphill, and then we drove three and a half hours home. So it is an absolutely epic day. But I do want to recap a little bit. You know, obviously I always try to push you guys to, to go after your goals and be a doer and an overcomer. You know, it started out that I didn't want to get on that prop plane. I hate small planes, but I did it. Then we traveled up into some crazy village, got in with the elders and didn't know what was going on. I mean, it was really freaky when we're, they're all sitting around us and all of a sudden he has a knife and he puts a knife around his waist. So you start thinking like, 
what is gonna happen here? I thought we were gonna have to fight our way out for it. And then it worked out great. They were so amazing. They took us to the cave. They took us in the cave. We caught the retic. It was an absolute success. And then we hiked back, which was really beautiful and, and definitely very tiring. And then ultimately we drove back and here we are. So all of this experience, which is probably the most memorable experience out of everything I've done on this trip, wouldn't have happened if I wasn't willing to push my boundaries and go beyond what my comfort zone is. So I hope you guys will take something from that, if you will. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are amazing and you mean so much to me. And then we only have a couple days left and then I'm back home with my family and my animals and we get back to normal. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have enjoyed this adventure. Do you want to see us do more adventures like this or do you really just prefer us to be back home? I really do want to know how you guys feel about things. You guys have an amazing day for me, please. Make sure to smash that like button and hit that notification bell. Be kind to somebody, and I promise I'm going to see you tomorrow.